Good morning, welcome to Coffee Walk. Get two of these in here. It's gonna be an interesting one this morning. I need to get a Richard stick first to get it going. I just hear Richard stick. Uh, yes, sir. Richard hey, Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> How are you, sir? Good to see you. Outstanding. Ya. <laughs> I was going for the coffee first. Yes, yes. That's how I start my day every day. So everyone out there, this is Chris Hawkins with Blue Island Coffee. You got, what kind of shirt you got on? Oh, it's a little liquid shirt there. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> That's cool you're here. Yeah, I'm excited. Very excited to be here. Check well, it out. Go through this whole place here. Again, I want to thank you for being one of our top sponsors all this time. So if you follow Chris, which you probably should now, basically what he does, and correct me if I'm wrong, Travels the world, hangs out on beaches, and looks for coffee beans. That's exactly, that's what I try to do most. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. So he's here today. We're going to do a normal coffee walk, go through the shop. It's an exciting one today. We're going to look at seven different vehicles. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. Oh, I got it, yeah. Wow. Look at that. Good morning, cows. So guess what? What? We officially have hit 300,000 subscribers. Wow. On YouTube. That's, that's awesome. Standing. Yeah. So did you ever think that we'd get there when you no, sponsored us? And that's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's incredibly cool. Three hundred thousand. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> way to go, way to go. And uh, Chris and I have actually put together some cool stuff. Um, we're going to have a giveaway with um, some coffee and some coffee walk and Collins Brothers swag to three of our subscribers on YouTube. So Chris, you want to talk about some Yeah, stuff so we got some great coffee. There. I've got recyclable K-Cups. Um, I've got uh, organic coffee as well. So I've got um, a swag bag with a coffee mug and some ground coffee and some uh, recycled K-Cups. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I've actually had a lot of people ask if we had K-Cups. Yeah. Yes, they're fantastic. I'm actually switching to compostable. The recyclables are still great, but the compostable is like a new thing. So. Oh, that's really cool. Um, that sounds complicated to me. <laughs> yeah. <it laughs> well, is. just a couple rules about the giveaway before I let you guys walk around and talk about some big updates on some cars um, that y'all have bought on Coffee Walk the past couple months, which is cool. Our 300,000 uh, subscriber episode. Um, Dennis and Chris are going to walk around and talk about some updates on some of the bigger episodes that have happened in the past few months. We're going to have these three swag bags and. We're going to pick three people or three subscribers from our YouTube channel, and that is existing subscribers, new subscribers. So everybody that watches on YouTube that hasn't subscribed or that comes over from Instagram or Facebook, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're going to pick three people. And next week, we're going to announce the winners on the episode of Coffee Walk on next Friday. So, guys. So the way we actually met Chris, Kelsey and I did, was he is a Jeep guy. Yes. <laughs> and he's got an early 392 Hemi conversion, so yep. he was way ahead of the curve. So we got a real Jeep guy on Coffee Walk. Proud to have him in here. Let's go see what we're doing. Yes. Y'all have fun. Thanks, Thanks guys. Guys. So As you know, Collins Brothers is known for CJ restorations, CJ service. We've been doing it since 1984. We've restored more CJs than any shop in the world. My opinion, it's the best quality in the world. Absolutely. This is a 1978 white V8 Golden Eagle. These are beautiful. Which you commonly see these in magazines and in movies and television shows, they are extremely difficult to find. One of our biggest collections in the country gave me the task to find a white Golden Eagle. We wanted original paint with all the right numbers, wow. right motor transmission, everything. It took me two and a half years. Wow. Not that easy to find. Now, those of you who are watching that think they're easy to find, we need a white 78 V8 CJ5 Golden Eagle. Mm. But this is a full frame up restoration. So when we say frame up, that's where we start, okay? Wow. Every nut and bolt is turned on this Jeep. So this is stripped of bare metal and then powder coated. Now, here's the motors in, now this Jeep is not done, it's close. And everything I'm gonna show you today is in the project stages, nothing's completely finished. So as you can see, we got 304 V8. Oh, it's got V8, I didn't know that. And what's nice. also nice about this Jeep is it's power steering, power brakes. Now, in 1978, that was the last year that the Levi seats actually on the buttons said Levi. <laughs> in 79, they no longer said that. But look at the condition of these seats. Amazing. So we've got containers full and several garages full of what we call NOS parts, new old stock. Right. This interior is very close to new old stock in that it came out of a 3,000 mile Jeep. Wow. So we did not restore these seats. But what is amazing is, see this right here? Oh, Three yeah. of these four seat belts have never been used. <laughs> so con condition-wise, some of the parts we put on this Jeep are not only unobtainable, yeah, so the back seat belts have never been used either. 
And this is a new old stock carpet set that's never been used. We just haven't put the pieces in yet. It's beautiful. Facebook fair coat G7 Alpine white. So very, very sought after Jeep. Of course, we restored the wheels. Now, some of the finishing touches we haven't done yet are the decals. These three go in the glove box. These go in the engine bay. You got your caution fan. There's your emissions decal that goes on top of the radiator. Three or four decal, heavy duty air cleaner decal. And these are the Levi's decals I was talking about. They go right here. I put on thousands of these myself, but you, you sit around this, it goes right there. Just a really cool finishing touch. And then on the exterior wise of the Jeep, you got your American Motors Jeep emblem. Mm -hmm. Old school. Right. CJ7 Old school. emblem. And this Jeep was a non catalyst Jeep, which means it didn't have all the smog equipment on it, which is pretty unusual. So that, this, that decal goes right here. And then below that goes the VIN decal, which we reproduce those as well. So this Jeep will literally look like it left the factory, except it'll be considerably nicer. Yes. Even small details like this footman loop here that ties down the hood is new old stock NOS. And this is something incredibly difficult to find. That's a leather ship knob. Oh, beautiful. So I mean, it had some really cool touches back in the day in 1978. I had an 85. 85 is a great year. Anything 76 to 86 we love. If you look at the gauges, they were completely restored. They're completely disassembled. All the needles done and new glass and all of them. Just, this Jeep will just be, absolutely will be the best Golden Eagle in the country when it's finished. It'll probably done in about two weeks. Nice. And then uh, here's an AMC 304 motor over here. This is what they look like you know, before we put them in the Jeep. You know, we have the correct engine paint for all these. Mm -hmm. And this build right here, which we'll see in the back in a minute, is a triple black. 81 V8 Laredo CJ7. Oh. <laughs> Extremely rare, desirable sought after G. Now check this out. This is something that you rarely ever see. You've got an AMC Eagle four-door wagon. This is a 1984. You remember these? Oh yes, absolutely. So look at the interior of this thing. It's absolutely insane. How nice oh, it is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Wow. So if you get in there, sit in it, and feel it. It feels new. It smells new. How many miles oh gosh, are on they it? They don't make sense like this anymore. No, they don't make sense like this. It's like uh, Cadillac and Jeeps. How my glasses on? One hundred fourteen thousand. No, I it's got three thousand four hundred actual miles on it. Oh wow! Now we'll do a little throwback on this. Zach will dig up a few pictures of it. But the under the hood of this thing, because it came from the Northeast, was all undercoated. It had cosmoline everywhere because it was rust proofed. Right. We spent a come on out. I want you to see this. We spent a tremendous amount of time just cleaning this we have not done paint work in this engine bay that's but not clean isn't that amazing that is insane so we're, and this is four-wheel drive wow there's a cult following for these but it's insanely hard to find one like this i mean it looked it turned out just beautifully the cosmoline actually protected the paint that's amazing so actually we, after we removed all the cosmoline the paint came back still bright and brilliant we redid the wheels and we're in the middle of servicing but i believe this is the very best example at least four-wheel four drive it is four-wheel drive how cool is that? It's amazing. And then come on back, I want you to see what's going on in the time. Yeah, body shop. I gotta find my coffee though. Yeah, so there's a go game some that. people play, where did Dennis leave his coffee? And I've actually left it on Jeeps before and they stayed on it oh, twice. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know, interesting fact, I, uh, I used to work in Southfield, Michigan at the old AMC building, the Jeep AMC building. Uh, really? It got sold out, uh, some investors had it, but we had a corporate headquarters there with some people. It was kind of cool. That I like cool. the old Jeep building. How, when did you have, your, what was your first Jeep? You said it was an 85? 85, yeah. So you've been a Jeep guy for a long time. I've an 86, and then I've had several of the uh, viewers. So now, you know, you drive a JK. <laughs> so, we oh, think about this. Wow. Yeah, well, I haven't it, seen this at all. Well, which is unusual, not unusual, but people, JKs, they still think that's, that's a late model Jeep. Well, they started in 07. These are 15 model years old. We have two JKs in here that people are brand new that we just refurbished. Both of them are refurbishing and giving to their kids. Oh, yeah. So this is going to this guy's daughter. She's going to OSU. That's what the orange is. <laughs> so we buffed and waxed the paint. We didn't repaint the whole Jeep, but we, we did add a black mount hood, painted that, the black mount fender flares, custom painted the wheels, black mount sidebars, which we did the orange insteps on. We've got the black mount rear flares as well. Black Mountain rear bumper, orange D-rings, Euro guards, and then if you'll come inside the paint booth, which I always like to say what's in the booth, Black Mountain Stage 2 bumper, 10-inch LED light. This is beautiful. Well, 
This Jeep has 200,000 miles on it. What year is this one? So we did a major mechanical service on it. I think it's a, it's an early Jeep. And you can always tell that by the way these seats are. Yes, yes. It's a 2008 with 200,000 miles. Wow. So we did a mechanical so service on this and, and a major refresh on the exterior for his daughter. So he's passing it down. It's unbelievable. We have two of them in here that the guys are giving their kids. And then he wanted the top painted gloss black. You know, this one was just the matte black finish from the factory. So here's the hard top for it. Oh, nice. So base coat, clear coat, again, you know, our paintwork is, is above what the factory looks yeah. like. So we, we're actually saving JKs now. That's great. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's, we, we just recently started restoring YJs for people and uh -huh. some TJs. We have two JKs in here that are basically for cosmetic restoration and major mechanical service. And those flares are for another just black scare that's outside. But now we've got the other JK back here with 100,000 miles on it. It's a 2013. He wanted a complete show quality repaint on this. We blew this whole Jeep apart. I'm talking everything off of it, the doors all the way down to the bare shell. So it's a 100,000 mile 2013. He wanted refurbished for his kit. Yeah. So, I mean, check it out. We're redoing JKs now. That's great. Yes. I think it makes us both look cool. Does it really? <laughs> <laughs> it is, but it is a Rubicon, it's a nice Jeep. So we put the amp steps on it, bushwhacker flares, and did a complete repaint. But they didn't look this good when they were new. I know. Because I mean, at all. we've sold them new. So there you have it. Two cosmetically restored JKs. And then over here is the body to the frame I showed you for the 1981 Triple Black Laredo. That's oh, how okay. far we go. If you see this hood's in bare metal. Yep. That was all the way down to bare metal, and it looks bad from up here. And most of that rust wasn't showing before it went to the blaster, but this body's still really good. Let me show you why. We've got two windshield frames we sent out. We always usually send one or two because they always come back with a little bit more rust than we had hoped for because yeah. they hold water. But if you look at the bottom of this Jeep, the main substructure, which are these oh, yeah. here, are still nice. Yeah. So what we'll do to this is we will drill exactly in every single spot weld the factory did, pull the whole floor out, put it back in and weld it in the exact same spots. Oh my goodness. So this will have a new front floor and a new rear floor. So inside of it, because we're painting this, we're not spray lining it, will look just like left factory. And this will be a stud Jeep. So you guys keep watching the 81 triple black V8 Laredo. Is, it's, it's, it's a holy grail Jeep. Yes. Very, very rare. I wanted one so bad before. Well, some of our past coffee walks, we've we located a 67 pace car convertible and a 69 one owner GTO. Let's go see what we're doing on the classic car side of things at College Brothers. Alex, you here? Well, he's here somewhere. One family owned car from new. Really? Uh, we found this in a garage in Houston. Zach will segue back a little bit to where we found this car. Okay. Looks like if we hold the door up, we'll probably get out. Uh, I can do much little bit. Yeah, we'll get it out. Yep. I'm excited about this car. I mean, a one owner GTO is so cool. Here, you push, Alex, you pull, and I'll steer, and Sean, you clap. No, I got the door. Okay. Hey, I'm clear. Go, Rose. Go, Rose. Go, Rose. Go, how cool is that? That's cool. The first time it's seen a lot of day in a long, long time. Yeah, that body's in really, really, really good shape. Yeah, this car's in good shape. It had been in that garage since, I believe, 1981. The license plate said 83, but I think he bought registration for a couple of years and never and didn't drive it. So this is a burgundy on black 400 car with a manual transmission. Interior's original. Guy saw this on Coffee Walk Club and said, I want that car. He said, but I don't want it painted. I want you to leave the paint and body alone. But the car's really straight. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want it buffed either. He likes the way this paint is patinaed, yeah. Uh, it came with five engines. Fortunately, one of them was the original numbers matching five motor. Engines. Five engines. So we did a full rebuild on the motor and we dynoed it outside of the car so that we know the motor will run right and we won't have it yo-yo, which is coming in and out if there's an issue. So the motor's fresh, it's been dynoed. Power steering, power brake car. I love that patina look. That's it's great. cool, isn't it? Very cool. Car's really straight. It probably would buff out, but this is how he wants it to look. And it's grown on me after I've looked at it the last couple of days. Like, man, I really like the way this I car like looks. Those, those are the original wheels. 
rally two wheels. And this is something that's really neat. The trunk was just full of parts when we got it. The original license plate was in the trunk. From what he <laughs> really? bought it. Yeah, from what he bought it new. Then we've done the brakes, fuel system. So basically we mechanically did this car and left it alone. And that's the way he wants it. And the interior of this car actually is pretty amazing for a 69. And to me, I, I don't think I'd redo it either. No, it looks good. It just looks the part. I mean, you got some wear on the it's driver's got, bolster and stuff like that. A little bit of fade on the carpet, but cool car. This will be, yeah, it does have a lot of character. It takes many years for, to build this character of Patina, if you will. Yeah. So this car will be done probably this week. Um, that guy's just going to have a cool driver. So you just redid the motor? We did motor. Basically the whole drivetrain. Okay, yeah. We either serviced it or rebuilt it. Brakes are done, fuel system's done. So it should be a good mechanically sound car. And I get it. I think if you took it to a car show like this, you're going to get more attention than what with fresh I paint. I think so too. I think so too. Now the Camaro, when we bought this car, my hope was we were going to do basically what we did to this car. The paint just would not buff out. Do it. it was just too, too much patina. It was too edgy. So we stripped it down to bare metal, did base coat, pure coat. This is one of 104 67 pace cars built. So it's extremely rare. It's a 354 speed, it's the first year of the 350. Mm -hmm. We've done the interior, it's not completely done. The Blue Island interior? Yeah, it is. That does look like Blue Island, <laughs> doesn't it? It's pretty, I think you need this. I do, I do. Look at that, I might have made a sale. <laughs> it matches your logos perfectly. I didn't even think about that. It's a 354 speed, and like I said earlier, that's it's the first year of the 350. Extremely rare car, one of 104 really solid we didn't have to do any rust repair on the floors at all the cars only got 40 i think 48,000 miles yeah 48,000 miles now alex has already done the mechanicals on this car we did the fuel system brakes motor runs and drives well now we still just got to do all the chrome accessories right. uh rocker side moldings lower moldings and what really sets this car off is it's got a big stripe kit this is you know 1969 indianapolis 500 and it's a bright blue decal uh oh, <laughs> I might be in trouble. So there you have it. What do you think? That's amazing. So we, I mean, we've always got a lot going on here. Yep. What helps us, keeps us going here is your coffee. There we go. I'm glad we can do that for you guys. <laughs> and now the winter time's coming up, so we got to up our order. Yes. Okay, got that. We drink a little Drinks bit more, more coffee in the winter time. So there you have it, Mr. Chris Hopkins with Blue Island Coffee. Please pleasure. like, tag, share, and follow. And remember, 300K on YouTube. Thank you guys for that. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do it now. See you later. Look what I got. The Where breakfast burgers are back. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you had one of these, oh Chris? It's been forever. Oh <laughs> those are outstanding. Like rare so they commodity. came back today? Yep, today. And oh. the McRib is back. No way. Yep, McRib. That's, oh, a, yeah. that's a fast food foodie day. Oh, be a line <laughs> Two of my favorite things in fast food. Breakfast burger. Man, if you've never oh. had one of these, you got to go to Whataburger today. They are awesome. Mm. Cheese, egg, hamburger patty. Oh, mm -hmm. good man. <laughs> it's also got bacon and tater tots. What does that When they took tots? these off the menu, that just killed me. Yeah. And then when McDonald's runs out of McRibs, that's a drag too. So you know what we're going for lunch today? McDonald's. <laughs> there we go.